you so much. We're thrilled to have you watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. Do you like encouraging news? Do you like things that are perky and, and uplifting? I do. And when I read these testimonies, when we read them to you, I really know that they stir and encourage and build up your faith because if God can do it for them, God can do it for you. So I was reading this testimony from Casey and she called and, and we prayed with her that her grandchildren would go back to church with her. And they went back to church and have been planning to go with her every Sunday since the prayer. So I just encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website and give us the opportunity, privilege of getting to pray for you because we know that God answers prayer. Mom, we have a special guest today. We Who do. We have Ray Light and his book is Maturing Into Yourself. So I think everyone wants to mature. You know, who wants to be slow? I want to mature at whatever age. So you need to watch this, put it on your calendar and know how important it is and call others. That's right. And mom, you know, we just know that our partners are an essential ingredient for yes, helping us are. to cover the earth with the word and connect everyone to the heart of God. So partners, I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, we're so very grateful for you. And the reason anyone is watching today right now in this moment is because of our partners. They pray for us. They help us financially. And we can't thank you enough for helping us and really sharing the love of God as well as the word of God all over the world. And I just want to say this, you know, you're watching right now and if you're struggling in your soul, having emotional issues, if you're struggling in any kind of, of uh, financial issues, maybe you're struggling with medical concerns, hop on the phone, get on the website. We know that God answers prayer. Nothing is impossible. The most important thing you can do in your life is have a personal, deep connection, relationship with Jesus. You know, many of us, we've asked Jesus to come into our hearts in the past. Maybe you kind of need to make a reboot, a start over. Some of you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, come into your life. And this is the most important decision that you can make in your life. Please get on the phone. Give us the privilege and opportunity to pray with you for Jesus to come into your life. Marilyn and Sarah have been covering the earth with the word on television for over 50 years. But television isn't the only way their ministry can be viewed. Today with Marilyn and Sarah can be seen on platforms such as YouTube, Roku, Fire TV, as well as podcasts on iTunes and Google. It's easier than ever to be encouraged with God's work at home, work, or on the go. You can replay any program at any time. Tune in and be blessed. Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are so excited to get some time with you, and I'm excited to connect you with my friend, Ray Light. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. You're the best. Yay, Ray! Thank you. Thank You're the you best. So it's great to be here. So I like having you around, but I want you to kind of give a quick biography mm -hmm. um, because you have an amazing book, Maturing Into Yourself, mm -hmm. and I want to hop into this, but it'll help people to connect with you to kind of get some of your background. Mm. Well, I, I'm a husband and a father. I'm a follower of Christ. I'm an identity coach. I've been a missionary with multiple different organizations through the year. I came to faith late. I wasn't, I was 30 when I came to faith. So that's one of the reasons why I have a lot of history of understanding trauma uh, in my life. But, you know, thankfully I'm a follower of Jesus that, that gets to know him more every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of your background, like what, the high school and elementary and all that, what did that look like for you? It's very confusing. I, 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 I didn't know that I had one of the issues I have. I, I've been recently diagnosed with bipolar 2, and then after that, I could see that through my whole life. And so it was pretty traumatic and pretty, pretty not fun. You know, there was plenty of ways that I tried to numb the pain and the hurt through my life. So I'm very familiar with what people do to, to try to cover trauma. And so it was very interesting, very messy through high school, through elementary. I don't even have many memories from before 12 years old. I had very faint little glimpses of things. So I don't have young memories. So I couldn't tell you all about elementary school. I can tell you a little bit about how messed up high school was and years after that. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And sometimes all that stuff, um, kind of messes with our identity because mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we get yeah. like a mis misshaped, oh, yeah. misconceived idea of 
who we are and when all that. And, mm-hmm. you know, I just encourage you, you might be listening right now and you're like, wow, you know, that completely reads my mail. Just hop on the phone, get on the website. And I want you to grab your copy of Maturing Into Yourself. Of course, we want to pray for you as well. Um, we know that God can absolutely bring healing and redemption. And, you know, Ray, when you talk about maturing into yourself, you're talking about your identity, mm-hmm. true identity. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you say that, what is it? Because not everybody in our audience gets the idea. What does it mean when you talk about true identity? Mm. It's who God actually created you to be is that you have a purpose. He created you intentionally for a purpose. And I know people struggle with that purpose, like they're not needed or or that someone else can do it. And I'm not needed in this place, but everybody is needed. You wouldn't have been created if you weren't needed. You have a purpose. You have a value. That's what I'm talking about is everybody was created for a purpose and who you are in that place of of loved, known, to be trusted, to actually be righteous and holy and valued and accepted. All that is your identity. Mm-hmm. But we don't often live in that. No, sadly, sadly. Most of us, I think, don't. It's a battle. It's a battle within the church, really. Not even to get outside of the church. It's very difficult. That's where I, I usually, most of my work I deal with with followers of Christ, but I can actually, I work with people who have not come to faith yet too on helping them process their trauma. But it's always, it's always trauma in there with each one of us of whether it's generational, cultural, religious trauma, there's, there's tons of it in there of stuff. So we don't believe who we really are. We believe these lies and we, we cover ourselves in, in shame. We hide in fear and we blame others in Mm -hmm. guilt. Mm-hmm. And not everybody knows when you think trauma, like I think trauma, I remember I was little and I was running on the uh, playground at school and some kid tripped me and I fell oh, down yeah. and I had trauma, right? I yeah, had scarred yeah. up my face and that was traumatic. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about with trauma or is it well, something a little different? Or well, mo- It can be oh, that, you yeah. know, anything. It, it can be that, but it can also be those scars that you can't see that are inside, right? And all of us have those scars on the inside too, on our, on our hearts, our soul in those places where we've, we've been tripped and, and fallen, you know, in that sense, emotionally or, or mentally where we've experienced things where it doesn't have to be something that people can see, but there's that aspect of trauma where something happened to us. And, and again, the way I share it is trauma isn't the problem. Unresolved trauma is the problem because we all deal with trauma all the exactly. time in different ways. But but when we believe a lie, like when when you tripped and and got that scar, if because of that scar, you believed you were ugly and that locked in and now you trigger every time and you react in some way. Right. There's some lie attached and then you relive. It's almost like you relive that memory over and over again every mm-hmm. time the lie triggers. That's an idea of, of unresolved trauma that you mm-hmm. just keep experiencing fear, shame, and guilt. Mm-hmm. And I think as Christians, people who follow Jesus, you know, were like, oh, you know, mm-hmm. it's under the blood and everything's oh, yeah. fine. Um, and in theory, that's true. Mm-hmm. But in practicality, it doesn't yeah. always. Yes. <laughs> we see it kind of play out. Yeah. And and like you talk about triggers, what would some of those triggers be? Yeah. First, I want to address that denial is not faith. Right. Denying that something's actually happening is not faith. That's, that's denial. And it's never helpful. It never works. But some of those triggers, when you, you, you know, let's, let's go to an easy one. When you're driving and somebody cuts you off and you aggressively want to yell at them or scream or whatever. We, Get up on their bumper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a little road rage going on. That is a trigger because there's a lie you believe in. Anywhere that you don't look like Jesus in a reaction, it's because you're believing a lie and you're self-protecting in fear, shame, or you guilt. You need to say that again. <laughs> that so, is so good. Each one of us, that's, that's the way I describe it is if you want to understand trauma and reactionary trauma, anywhere that you... You don't look like Jesus in your reaction to a situation. You are believing a lie and you're self-protecting in fear, shame, and guilt. That's what I found. That is so excellent. Mm -hmm. So excellent. And I remember when I felt totally free Mm -hmm. of something. Yeah. And just free. Yes. And it just seemed too good to be true. Oh, it is. But it was true. Yes, yes. (laughs) That's that's one of the lies we get that it's too good to be true. Being free is too good to be true. <laughs> and it's true. Yes, it's mm-hmm. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the things you talk here as well is you talk about um self-nurture, mm-hmm. you know, versus denying yourself. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and there's a sense of in Christianity that we're deny, den mm. to deny ourselves, lay down mm. our lives for you. What is, how do you balance that? Yeah, that's an interesting topic for the church. It really is. And, and I break it out in there that self-nurture is really just taking personal responsibility for our own growth and development in the Lord. Right, because we're not meant to deny our new selves. We're meant to deny our old selves, which is part of no longer believing those lies about ourselves. That's denying our old self. But we're not. God created you for a purpose. The new creation. We're, there's never a time where we're meant to deny who we are in Christ, and that's where we get confused. And since we don't know who we are in Christ, we don't know what to deny, and we think we believe the lie that our hearts are wicked still, right? Because our hearts aren't wicked because when we came to faith, he removed that old heart of stone. He gave us a heart of flesh. He wrote the law on it. And then he fulfilled the righteous requirement of the law on that new heart. So we can trust our heart now. Can't always trust our emotions because that's not telling us what's going on. But we can actually be free in those areas and, and nurture the who we really are. So how do you do that? Well, there's many ways. You can, in the sense of of pursuing the truth of who you are, you can, what are the desires that God put in your heart? You know, how can you, you can, and I break it out in the book on the ways that you can physically take care of yourself, mentally take care of yourself, stimulate yourself with games, with learning, take time in the word, right? I mean, the spiritual development of, of time with God, all those different areas where you can actually nurture the growth of who you are in Christ. Mm hmm and and having having good structures in place oh yeah and good routines in mm -hmm. place that that validate and really affirm that divine self yeah that's very helpful self. if you can have patterns in your life where you mm -hmm. can continue to remind yourself who you are in christ do you have some patterns in your life who patterns are tough for me with my issues but i try to work on that i do in the sense of my morning routine i have and and getting time in the word and the the, the meditating in the word and reading the scriptures along with some exercise every day. I have to manage myself with the extra things I have going on where I have to do those patterns, which are very tough for me. Mm -hmm. It's it's a discipline for me to discipline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's just say that. And, and it's, you have to uh, plan. Mm -hmm. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yeah. Right? That stupid axiom, yeah. but still true. And some of those patterns and routines, things that we can do consistently, yeah. we brush our teeth, you yeah. know, thankfully we do that. These are yeah. things that are helpful. And so I think it's really good to have some patterns, some routines that validate and reinforce your true identity. So mm -hmm. I just want to encourage you, if you're struggling with your identity, you're struggling in some of your relationships, you're struggling to believe the goodness of God, the love of God, we would love to pray for you. So hop on the phone, get on the website, and of course, grab your copy of Maturing Into Yourself today. God has given you the potential for a wonderfully unique and healthy identity so that you can live out His kingdom purpose for your life with boldness and confidence. For your gift of $43 or more, we'll send you Ray Light's book, Maturing Into Yourself growing into the fullness of your healing. Learn how to be fully present, communicate your needs, establish healthy boundaries, and experience real and lasting freedom. You'll also receive Marilyn's book, Rebuild, Restoring Your God-Given Identity, and Marilyn and Sarah's CD set, A New You. These resources will give you the tools to release the person of purpose that you were born to be. With your gift of $120 plus or more, we will include the NKJV Spirit-Filled Life Bible. Be equipped to live in God's kingdom, exercise the gifts of the Spirit, and lay hold of God's promises for your life today and going forward. Call or click today. Marilyn and Sarah have been covering the earth with the Word on television for over 50 years. But television isn't the only way their ministry can be viewed. Today with Marilyn and Sarah can be seen on platforms such as YouTube, Roku, Fire TV, as well as podcasts on iTunes and Google. It's easier than ever to be encouraged with God's work at home, work, or on the go. You can replay any program at any time. Tune in and be blessed. 
Hey there, I want to encourage you to download our app on your phone. You're like, really serious? Absolutely. We have some amazing things on our app, really convenient for you. We have today's program. We have opportunities to pray for you. We have places for you to give and partner with us. We also have things that will help you know what events are coming up and group tours that you could join, as well as a Bible reading plan, daily Bible reading plan. This app is super relevant, very convenient, and super helpful for your daily living with Jesus. Now, we talked a little about the connection between personal responsibility and maturity. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. Yeah, the connection there, the way that I see it, once, once we experience the healing and we get to be who we really are, at some level, we have to take personal responsibility for our own thoughts, our own emotions, and our own behavior. Without that, we can't actually know who we are, for one. Because we dump everything on somebody exactly. else. Exactly. And then what we do is we just start self-protecting well, in a fault. different way. Yeah, exactly. It's their fault, not yeah. mine. If you wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have behaved I like would, this. Yeah, yeah, I would be okay. Right? And then, and the so problem. there's no maturity in that because there's no accountability for who I am. So there's that process of like, oh, wow. Oh, wait, I did do that. <laughs> that, that. That was me. Right? And without without condemnation. Right. It's right. OK. Yeah. It's these these things, these reactions, the false self that we've talked about or the old traumatized self. It's not really who you are. And when we trigger into that, that's what the way I share it is like triggers are just information and opportunity. That's what they are. So they're information about something that's not truly who you are and an opportunity for you to be who you really are. Hmm. Now, would that be true of old guilt? Old guilt. So they pick them up. Yeah. Well, I did this. I can oh, never yeah. be free. Exactly. That's yeah. the big deal. Yeah. Any of that. It's like, oh, I did this in the past. The enemy loves to remind us of oh, stuff we does. did in the past, mm -hmm. whether it was before you were in faith or afterwards. Exactly. All of it was covered in the blood. He remembers it all. Exactly. He has the yeah. best memory. Yes. And he loves to remind us. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. You got Holy Spirit reminding us of the truth and you got the enemy reminding us of the lie. Mm -hmm. That's just how it goes. Yeah. And the enemy is native language is lying. It says yes. it in John eight forty four, yeah. Satan lies. Yep. He is the father, father and the author, yeah. and that's his language. Every yep. time he talks, mm -hmm. it's a lie. It's deception. So and you if know you don't who's have, talking to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you don't have Holy Spirit as a mm -hmm. spirit of truth, then you're kind of just the victim of all that lies oh, and deception so and distortion and all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. Really crazy. You know, I just encourage you, maybe you've been listening to, you've entertained, you've been conver conversing um, with deception and with lies. And some of this is starting to really like, wing, you know, kind of give you some enlightenment. And we just want to encourage you to hop on the phone, get on the website, because we want you to live in the light. We want you to live in the truth. Mm -hmm. And we want Holy Spirit to lead you into truth. So we'd love to pray for you on that. And you're like, well, I don't really need that. But what about this person? Well, we'll pray for, you know, hop on the phone. We can pray for your friend, your neighbor, your relative. Um, but I also encourage you, grab your copy of Maturing Into Yourself. And Ray, this is, I love this book and it's also dense. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't read it just like, oh, scan, scan, mm -hmm. scan. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, you have to kind of really process and take some time yeah. to think about it and let it germinate. Yeah, does, I, when you wrote it, does it feel that way to you? It, it's a pattern I have. Apparently I don't write fluff. I do, it's meat and potatoes. Oh, that, yeah. that's, <laughs> that, so there isn't, you know, because I've found a lot of books I read could be a trifold brochure. <laughs> with the information that's in them. And I, I, so I can't do that. That's a th That could be one of my old unhealthy patterns. I don't know. But that's just when I write something, it's all information that's transformational for you. It's, it will actually impact you. It's something that you can use. Mm -hmm. And so it is. it does take some time. It's not a hurry. Even the Bible study I wrote, it was like, hey, guys, don't run through this. Take your time. Dig in. I've one of one of the one of the groups that's going through my Bible study took almost a year for a six session Bible study to go through it. Mm -hmm. So every everything I do is dense in that sense where there's a lot to it. But I, it's worth it to take your time and go through it because mm -hmm. it's it's. Freeing. transformational mm -hmm. Freeing. and it, mm -hmm. and it recalibrates when yeah. you talk about these things. Another thing I wanted to ask you, you talk about meditating on the word. Mm -hmm. And when you say that, what does that look like for you? Uh, for me to get into the details of it, what I actually, I will, I listen to the word a lot. And because I grew up dyslexic, I got healed of the dyslexia when I came to faith. That's one of the things that God healed me of, but he didn't backfill. So I don't read well and I don't enjoy reading. It's not, it's not a hobby for me is to read. So I'll listen to the word. So honestly, I'll, I'll lay back and I'll 
I'll listen to scripture and just literally meditate and see where it takes me. And honestly, some of the teaching I have comes from that, from actually listening to the word. And he takes me into visions sometimes and reveals truth to me. Some mm -hmm. of the truths I've had come from visions of listening and the listening to the word. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And and do you listen to the same thing over and over? Do, what, uh, it's mixed like for me. Like right now I'm going through in chronological order, which is a little rough for me. Sometimes good patterns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I'm doing that, but then I'll just jump into wherever I'm inspired, where if, you know, if I need inspiration, I'm going to jump into Galatians or Ephesians. Kind of, it depends on what mood I'm in, where I'm at, on what scripture I need to listen to. Mm -hmm. Is how I do it. You put it on fast speed or slow regular, speed? Just regular. Normal. Normal mm -hmm. talking. Mm -hmm. And then like in the morning, is that how you do that? You listen? Normally in the morning and evening is when I will do that. And sometimes I'll put just the scriptures on in general. Sometimes when it's in, in my ear, when I'm cooking or I'm doing something. It's And it's not all day long. I'm like, I'm not in the word all day long. I don't want to. <laughs> there's mm -hmm. just different times I jump in there. But the morning would be a time. And sometimes with the worship also meditating with God in, mm -hmm. in the morning. And how long do you do listen? I, I don't have a set pattern of time. Mm -hmm. That's, I couldn't tell you. It's it. I don't do it like, I'm going to do this for 10 minutes. It might be 10 minutes, might be 45 minutes, might be five minutes. Cause I have something else going on that I have to jump on. So it's just, I try to do what I can without putting a law on myself mm -hmm. so that I get discouraged. Or setting a goal yeah, and exactly. you can then check a box yeah, and then exactly. it's just kind of. It's, it's just re relationship. I mm -hmm. try to keep a relationship with the word in the same way that I'm going to talk to my wife. I'm going to talk to my children. I'm going to talk to my friends. I'm going to take some time and, and talk to God. Mm -hmm. And so you listen and then do you like ever, ever so often stop and say, hey, can we talk about this? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, well, there's definitely times where I'll stop and I'll pray and I'm like, what do you mean by that, God? You know, what I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. so I have an actual real relationship with him, which might look a little messy for some, because when I got a problem, I go to him with it. And just like a child would. And and he he's fair and he's honest in those times. He's, there's there's no time where he's angry at me because I come to him with a question that seems a little abrasive. And because sometimes I'm in a bad place. And so I go to God in a bad place and he he resolves that. What does that mean? A bad place? Well, not in a happy place, right? I'm mad at him. I'm angry at something I didn't get, right? You, you know how that is. We're, we wanted this. We expected this. Sometimes, you know, faith is when, you know, when we put our hope in God, we're not disappointed. But when we put our hope in an outcome, we can be pretty disappointed. That is so good. <laughs> and so, and I do it all the time. I do it, you know, it's like, oh, that I equate this outcome is God. And then when that outcome doesn't happen, then God, what's up? Where were you? Yeah, exactly. You disappeared. <laughs> yeah. You're not listening to me. Mm -hmm. And God never leaves us, mm -mm. never oh. forsakes us. Mm -mm. We're not like swinging in the wind. No. And just kind of out there on our own little island, you know, detached. Yeah. But I think the enemy would want us to think that. Yeah. Yeah. And the enemy would, would accuse and say, God didn't show up. Oh, yeah. And God didn't, God isn't who. I mean, I think the enemy does all kinds of havoc. Yeah, if you really are, right? That's, mm -hmm. You hit Jesus. If you really are, so there's always that. Is he really who he says he is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's always a lie that the enemy's trying to throw at us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important for us to recognize that. Because mm -hmm. if we don't recognize it, then we just start to go down that rabbit mm -hmm. hole. And it's a very ugly, mm -hmm. dark place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And do you ever find when you wrestle with God, because it's a wrestle, mm -hmm. what you're saying is I wrestle. Um, do you ever find God gets cranky with you for wrestling? No, I don't get cranky <laughs> with me, but Holy Spirit's a little feisty sometimes with his answers. <laughs> you know, that's what he, he, he like speaks to me in my language is what I would say is the way the way Holy Spirit does. So he gets, but he's never disrespectful, mm -hmm. never shaming, but, but he... We'll step in yeah. and give you like, Hey, yeah, yeah. what about this? He's like a good friend would, you know, just like one of your, just like one of your close friends would say right. something to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I had one time I was talking with God and I was like, you know, it doesn't feel like you're here. And I felt like God said, would you like me to leave? So you know what that really feels like? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's okay. No, yes, <laughs> but I believe good. you. Yeah. Everything's good. <laughs> you're right. I'm wrong. Yes, yes. <laughs> I just want to encourage you. Hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you.
I know you have needs. Obviously you have probably emotional needs, financial needs, family needs, relationship issues, decisions. Some of it is the way you see the world, your outlook, your point of view, um, maybe the filters from trauma, up the upbringing issues. But we know that God can answer prayer and God can absolutely redeem and transform. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We'd love to pray for you. And of course, grab your copy of Maturing Into Yourself. And the real issue here is God wants us to be fully who God made us to be. Not the fake self, not a trauma self, but our true identity. And God can help you and me mature into our true selves and true identity. God has given you the potential for a wonderfully unique and healthy identity so that you can live out His kingdom purpose for your life with boldness and confidence. For your gift of $43 or more, we'll send you Ray Light's book, Maturing Into Yourself, Growing Into the Fullness of Your Healing. Learn how to be fully present, communicate your needs, establish healthy boundaries, and experience real and lasting freedom. You'll also receive Marilyn's book, Rebuild, Restoring Your God-Given Identity, and Marilyn and Sarah's CD set, A New You. These resources will give you the tools to release the person of purpose that you were born to be. With your gift of $120 plus or more, we will include the NKJV Spirit-Filled Life Bible. Be equipped to live in God's kingdom, exercise the gifts of the Spirit, and lay hold of God's promises for your life today and going forward. Call or click today. Oh my goodness, this has been such an amazing interview. Ray, mm -hmm. would you pray for our audience? Yeah, I would love to. Thank yeah. you. So I just, I just want to, I just want to let everybody know that it's okay to need help. First of all, Jesus, that you would just bless everyone. Everybody would know that it's okay that we need help. And I just, I speak life into you right now that you would have grace for yourself. You would know that it's okay that you're not the only one that's dealing with unresolved trauma. And I just, I just pray life and peace and freedom and joy over every aspect of your life over every relationship you have and, and that you would just be as kind to yourself as you want to be to everyone else. And as kind as Jesus is to you, that you would be as kind to yourself, that you would have that ability because you deserve to be free, to be healed. Whew. You deserve to be the truth of who you are in Christ and God wants you to be that. And I just pray that Holy Spirit would just empower you and convict you with the truth of who you are in Christ so that you can accept it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to say today is the best day of my life. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Jesus Christ lives big in me today. And I thank God that you can call in for prayer. We don't counsel, but we love to pray. Mm. And we love the answers we get to prayer. Mm. It's wonderful. Say thank you, Jesus, for mm. this wonderful day. I believe you've called me to be a blessing. And I am a blessing to others because you make me that. Mm.